The season of Huga is upon us, and today I'm sharing nine wintry illustrations that you can draw, whether it's digital or analog. Hello, my friends, what's up? Welcome back. Today's video is something different, something that has been much requested and that I've never done. And that is digital illustration. We're going to grab my Apple pen, my tablet, and I use Procreate, and I'm going to do some digital illustration. I love doing a little grid, and the theme of this grid is going to be holiday and sort of Higa and wintry, cozy items. I think um, you'll really enjoy drawing like gingerbread and evergreen along with me. I think the reason that I haven't done a digital drawing on this channel ever it's partly because you can do some amazingly creative, crazy stuff with a digital drawing, and that's not really where I take it. My drawing tends to be a lot more like um, analog, <laughs> but in the digital space. Now it is, I think, very beginner friendly, and it's definitely my style. So without further ado, let's just grab our Apple Pencil and get drawing. All right, I'm working on my iPad. We'll open up Procreate and we'll create a new project. I'm just gonna use the screen size. It's kind of like working on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. We'll change our ink to black. And then the pen that I like to use is in the inking section and it's called dry ink. I'm probably gonna use that for almost everything. So yeah, not really a Procreate tutorial. If you're drawing along with pencil, you're gonna get a lot out of this. Go ahead and draw that three by three grid. Then come up here to the top, select your layers, and then we're going to change the opacity. We'll lower the opacity of that grid layer and we'll create a second layer where we'll do our drawing. First thing we're going to draw together is a little tea kettle. So here's how I do it. I like to start with a square with rounded edges and then I put a little lid on it, kind of round things out. We'll put a spout, a spout. It's just two little curving lines there. And then I put a handle along the top with the coil. Don't worry, we're gonna do all of this again. This layer is just your initial sketch. Doesn't need to be perfect. Next up, a gingerbread man. Do a cross. You're kind of gonna draw a stick figure and then we're going to um, kind of fatten up our stick figure one section at a time. And that for me is the easiest way to sketch a little gingerbread cookie man. I can give him some buttons, a smile, whatever. As I said before, just do your sketch on this layer and we will worry about perfecting it later. Next up, some mistletoe. Start with a curving line and then we're just gonna add a whole bunch of oval shaped leaves. And on top of that, a couple berries. Finish it with a bow. Mistletoe is a lot of fun to draw and you can make a kind of a large or small bunch depending how many leaves you add. Okay, with our first three sketches done, we're coming up to our layers palette. We're going to lower the opacity of that second layer and we're going to add a third layer, keeping the opacity at 100% on layer three. Close the layers tab, and now all we have to do is trace over those initial sketches. It makes drawing really easy. I know a lot of people worry about digital drawing, thinking I can't. it's hard to erase, or it's just gonna be annoying. How can I just sit down and draw? Well, you don't just sit down and draw. You want to use layers and that sets you up for success. Just like doing it in pencil first and then going over it in pen. I'm going to finish up my mistletoe and I just want to be clear. This is truly not a procreate tutorial. This is an illustration tutorial. You don't need an iPad to follow along. You can do this in pen or pencil. So now that our sketch is done, we're going to go back here to layer two and we are going to clear it. So get rid of our pencil sketch. And then we are going to use that cleared layer two to color in our illustration. So I am just grabbing like a dusty blue for my tea kettle. I'll make the pen a little bigger. <laughs> and then you have to remember to change the opacity back. I had lowered it for the sketch, put it back to 100%. And then we can color in our illustration on layer two. And that is below the third layer that has the sketchy black line. So you get to kind of color under the black, which I think is really nice. Once you've colored in the blue kettle, we want to add some highlights. Now you can do it with a white pen or you can go up to the erasers tab and choose the dry ink eraser so it looks the same as your pen and you can just simply erase some of the blue that you've already put down. Yes, you could totally just use the white 
pen, the dry ink, but this is a fun trick, especially if you're gonna change the background color and you want that background color to be the highlight. So it's, it's not as bold and high contrast as white. Anywho, then I've gone back to my pen, selected a slightly darker blue, and I'm also adding some low lights. Remember, you can do this with marker or colored pencil, and it's the same sort of uh, thing. You just have to think about those highlights ahead of time. I am coloring in my gingerbread man with just a nice medium honey colored brown. And then I'm choosing a uh, creamy white and we're going to give him some icing detail. And I'm just doing a really light pressure and going and sort of giving him a little perimeter there with my icing. <laughs> if you are doing this in marker or pen, use a white gel pen for this step. Okay, still working on that same layer. Let's select a color for our mistletoe. So you can see I'm still working on layer two. I go to my color wheel. There are lots of ways to select color on the iPad. You can create different palettes. You can use your history. You can put in a hex code. I tend to like using the wheel and I kind of just move the pen around till I find that perfect hue. And I've got a nice medium warm green here for my mistletoe. I just kind of scribble it all in. I can grab a darker green to heighten the contrast a little bit. And of course my black line stays on top and I can just scribble underneath. Then I want to choose a light peachy uh, pink for the ribbon. And to finish the mistletoe, I just need to add some white uh, berries. You could also do red berries, totally up to you. So I'm picking a nice creamy white and I kind of thought I need to put some on top of the black lines. So I just switched to layer three, made some of those berries a little bit larger. And then I can always go back to black because I'm using black for the outlines and just add that uh, sketchy black line on top of everything. So use those two layers to perfect your drawing if you are doing this on the iPad. And there are our first three items all done. Moving down to our next line, we're going to create two more layers. So layer four and five, and I am going to begin in the exact same way with my sketches. And then we will change the opacity, lower the opacity of that layer, go over it. So I'm approaching them all the same way. And actually this video should give you a really good idea of how I approach most digital drawings. I like to work with that dry ink pen. I like to keep it very much like an analog drawing. So if you are a digital artist, feel free to drop some helpful hints and tips below because I'm sure everyone would love to read them. I am not dropping a lot of helpful tips today, but I am showing you how to illustrate a Christmas tree. This little cutie is my Charlie Brown tree. You basically just put a bunch of stems here and add all these little V shapes uh, along the stem to create pine needles. And it's really cute and kind of wimpy. The next thing I want to draw is a stocking. So I kind of just do this boot shape and then I add a cuff at the top and maybe a little hook and we'll mark off the toe and the heel and that's enough for the sketch so let's lower the opacity on that layer and then we are going to go over everything the first thing being a brown paper package tied up with string so I just did like a lumpy square and then it's got a bow and some string across it and a little gift tag there as well super simple and then for the tree you're going to start with a rounded rectangle for the base draw the stem it can be as large or as small as you like. This would look cute a little uh, shorter and fatter, I think. Add as many little curving branches as you want to. And then I'm actually going to wait to add more detail until I use my green. For the stocking, you'll do that cuff. You can kind of round everything off to make it look a little softer and less rectangular. And I am just kind of putting some little lines to show that it is hand knit and that it's a bit lumpy. Again, I marked off the heel and the toe and I think all the other details we will add with color. Of course, you'll clear that layer where your initial sketch was. Make sure it's sitting below the black outline layer and then you can choose the color that you want for your parcel. Remember to put the opacity back to 100 as well. You could always create a new layer too and just delete that one, it totally doesn't matter. For uh, coloring this in, I just 
outlined it and then brought the color over so the uh, Procreate will fill it in for me. You can do that. Then I'm just lightening that honey color ever so slightly and I'm kind of creating some little highlights and I'll also darken the color slightly and create some low lights. Whether you're doing this in Marker or on Procreate, just get really loose with the highlights and lowlights. You want that package to look lumpy and um, paper tends to crinkle in really funny ways. So don't be too um, perfect with your highlights and lowlights. You want them to be a little bit odd. And that's what you see me trying to achieve. <laughs> I keep going back and kind of changing them, but I think that looks good. Let's move on to our little Charlie Brown tree. I just did the stem and base um, with two colors of brown there, a little bit of a lighter brown on top. And then we'll choose a nice medium kind of minty green for our needles. And as I showed you on the sketch, we're just going to do all these little V shapes along each and every branch and make it look like pine needles. I remember when I was about six or seven, I uh, conjured up this idea of how I could draw a really detailed Christmas tree and I could do all these singular pine needles. And that's what I did. I would draw every single little pine needle. And I just thought my drawing was just so, so adult and so sophisticated because I had done every single needle. So that's exactly what we're doing here. I think it looks really cute with all the little green needles. Let's move on to our stocking. And for this one, we're going to use that wheel, move it into the oranges and or yellows or even the reds. And we're going to pick like a very, very warm gray, could be almost pinky or almost yellowy. And we'll just kind of do a messy crisscross fill in to make it this stocking look like it is hand knit. Just like with the package, we're gonna move that color slider ever so slightly to get a slightly darker color. And then I am adding some low lights, especially along the cuff and on the heel and the toe. Just keep it messy and loose. And I think that looks really cute. And you could also add a little bit of a crisscross on the body of the stocking. And then that is all done. Next up, what do we do? We create two more layers for our third row of illustrations. So go ahead and do that. And then we are going to work on the lower layer. And of course, I'll take my pen back to black. Okay, so the next thing I wanna draw is apple and cinnamon because I'm drawing all these cozy, wintry things. I'm starting with a circle and two lines, just that's my basic guide for apple and cinnamon. Then we can change the shape of the apple slightly, add a little stem, add some seeds. It's gonna be like a half apple. And we'll just thicken up those lines and make them look like cinnamon. We'll add a line down the center of the rolls to you know, give that rolled bark look. <laughs> the next drawing, I wanna do a little toque. I kinda of didn't like the initial shape there. I want it a little more pointy but a rounded triangle with a cuff on the bottom and a pom-pom on the top. That's pretty much the look I'm going for. We could give it some ear flaps and strings. I just knit a hat like that for Selly and it's so cute. He looks just like a little munchkin in it. <laughs> And the final thing that I want to draw is um, some evergreen with some pine cones. So just mark the pine cones first, two little ovals, and then you can kind of um, frame them with these sprigs of evergreen and it's really easy to sketch. I've lowered the opacity of that layer and then on the upper layer, I am going to sketch over everything. And uh, of course, having the guide there makes it really simple and really easy. To draw the cinnamon, just place a little dark circle at the top and a line down the center and it looks like that roll of bark. I'm going over the hat and just keeping everything really loose and free. You could put a pattern on it with little hearts or snowflakes like I've done here or just keep it basic and simple like the stocking. Finally, for the pine cone and evergreen, we're tracing over the branches and the outline of the pine cones, but we're going to do the rest in color. So clear your sketch layer, make sure to change the opacity back to 100 and choose a nice light gray or creamy color for the inside of that apple. It might take a few tries to get that color right, but I think I like what I've got there. Use a cool red for the perimeter of the apple. Whether you're doing this in pencil crayon marker or on Procreate, doesn't matter. Um, I'm doing a medium brown for the cinnamon and then use a, a slightly darker brown to just shade the middle a little. And again, make it look like it's rolled. 
We're going to get a really light, warm gray for our hat. <laughs> you know exactly which brush pen I would be using right now. <laughs> and we're just going to color everything in except on the pom-pom. We'll just use the gray to add a little low light so it looks white. Then I'm going to darken that ever so slightly and we will add some low lights and some texture. Then I want to do a blue design, but I want to pick up a blue from another place in my project. Of course, if I knew what marker I used, I'd just grab it. On the iPad, what I can do is just use my finger, hold it on the blue. You'll see the brush changes to that color, and now I can use the exact same shade. So in that way, I kind of keep everything looking cohesive by using the same color in a couple different places. Obviously, easy to do with markers, um, but it's just a nice trick that you can use when you're working digitally. Okay, let's finish our last illustration. I'm going to grab a brown that I've already used and we'll color in the pine cones. And then here's how I approach the evergreen. I just kind of change the pressure that I am um, putting on the Apple Pencil. So you can see I kind of get these large and small little dots and lines and I think that's a really fun way to approach evergreen. Um, whether you're using a brush pen or the Apple Pencil, you just kind of change your pressure and wiggle it a little and it, it makes these messy evergreen sprigs. We'll add some brown to the branches, we'll add a low light on those pine cones, and the last thing I want to do is just make my pen a little smaller and do these little scalloped or squiggly lines to make the pine cones really look like pine cones. And that's looking good, except that my bottom three illustrations are a little large. So I'm going to merge those two layers so that the three illustrations are on a single layer. And I'll click the transform tool, allowing me to resize and uh, readjust the entire layer. I can also use the selection tool, do a free form selection to clip out, you know, just the apple. And then using the transform tool, I can move it around and just make sure that everything is placed perfectly in the grid. I can even rotate them ever so slightly and just get everything looking just the way I want. All right, with that done and everything looking even and balanced, I wanna change my background color and just make it kind of a dusty peach um, to help with that huga, cozy, wintry look of the overall illustration. Now that I've done that, I may need to add some white like to the apple or maybe the pom-pom on the hat. Not a big deal. We can kind of color in and add a little bit of white, but otherwise I am all done. I hope you enjoyed these cozy wintry illustrations and I hope you feel like you could approach them however you like, digital or analog. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Oh, what's that? You like my shirt? <laughs> well, I finally have my own designs, my own artwork on t-shirts, and there's lots more good stuff coming as well. If you wanna shop my new merch, you can click the link in the video description, or if you're watching on YouTube today, just check the merch shelf right below this video.